Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with unit number five. Name of the unit is resonant converters and protection of power devices and circuits. In this unit, we are going to see following topics. We are going to see resonant converters. We are going to see ZCS and ZVS, that is zero current switching and zero voltage switching, over voltage and over current protection circuit, EMI, electromagnetic interference, Myself, Professor Amit Kumar Mishra. I'm having total 10 years of teaching experience and my domain expertise is of 10 years. So let's start. First of all, what is resonant converters? Resonant power converters contain resonant LC networks whose voltage and current waveforms vary sinusoidally during one or more sub intervals of each switching period. These sinusoidal variations are large in magnitude and this small recall approximation does not apply. Need of resonant converters. For high efficiency power processing, the power semiconductor devices are operated in the switching mode on or off. The switching of semiconductor devices normally occurs at high current level. Therefore, when switching at high frequencies, these converters are associated with high power dissipation in their switching devices. Advantage of resonant converters, reduce switching loss. Turn on or turn off transitions of semiconductor devices can occur at zero crossing of tank voltage or current waveforms, thereby reducing or eliminating some of the switching losses. Hence, resonant converters can operate at high, frequency, high switching frequencies than comparable PWM converters. Zero voltage switching also reduces converter EMI, generated EMI. Classification of resonant converters, series resonant, parallel resonant, class E resonant, class E resonant rectifier, ZPS that is zero voltage switching resonant converters, ZCS that is zero current switching resonant converters, two quadrant ZVS resonant converters and resonant DC link inverters. Let's start with ZCS resonant converter switching uh, switch configuration. So. Here you can see in each circuit we have used LC. So what is the use of this? So this is resonant circuit component that are used to turn on and off the switch S1 at zero current. We are going with ZCS that is zero current switching. Resonant circuits are of two type, L type and M type. In both the types, the L limits DI by DT of the switch and LC constitute the resonant circuit. ZC resonant converter turn on and turn off at zero current. This converter can operate at high range frequency that is 1 megahertz to 2 megahertz. L type ZCS resonant converter. Here we have used LC resonant circuit which are these are resonant component LC. This LE and CF are filter component and this DM is prevailing diode. This is the complete circuit of that. We will see the operation of it in each mode. So these are the explanation of the circuit in each mode and this is the equivalent circuit of that. So we are going to see the operation in five modes, mode one, mode two, mode three, mode four and mode five. Let's start with mode one. This mode is valid for zero to T1. S1 is on, diode DM conducts, IL increases linearly. This is the equivalent circuit of mode 1. Mode 2, this mode is valid for 0 to T2. S1 remains on and diode DM off. This is the equivalent circuit of mode 2. Mode 3, this mode is valid for 0 to T3. The inductor current falls from I0 to 0. Mode 4, this mode is valid for 0 to T4. The capacitor supplies the load I0. And mode 5, this mode is valid for 0 to T5. When capacitor voltage tends to be negative, diode DM conducts. The load current I0 flows through diode D DM. And this, these are the equivalent circuit in mode 3, mode 4 and mode 5. This is the waveform for that uh, load current. And this is the voltage across the capacitor for different mode T1, T2, T3, T4 and T5. 
then it's a zvs resonant converters zero voltage switching resonant converters so here we have used capacitor across the switch zvs resonant converter turn on and turn off at zero voltage the output voltage control can be achieved by varying the frequency and operates with constant off time control this is the complete circuit of zvs we will again see the operation of zvs circuit in detail in mode wise so in mode 1 this mode is valid for 0 to t1 in this mode s1 and diode dm are off c charges at constant rate of load current i not the capacitor voltage vc rises in mode 2 is valid for 0 to t2 s1 remains off and diode dm turn on mode 3 This mode is valid for zero to T three, the capacitor voltage that falls from V S. Mode four, this mode is valid for zero to T four. S one and diode D M are on. The inductor current rises linearly. I L three two I not. And last mode is mode five. This mode is valid for zero to T five. S one is on. D one D M is off. The load current I not flows through the switch. So this is the circuit diagram of Z V S, and these are the equivalent circuit in different mode mode 1 mode 2 mode 3 mode 4 and mode 5 this is the waveform voltage across the capacitor and load current for different interval t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 we have drawn this as per the operation of the zvs circuit in different modes that we have seen in our previous slide next is cooling and heat shrink source of power loss in semiconductor devices are as follows first source of power loss is forward conduction power loss now what is forward conduction power loss so this is the product of on state voltage drop across a conducting power device and forward current through it switching loss switching loss depends on the turn on and turn off time of the device being used and on the frequency at which it is being operated different cooling methods for power devices we know that wherever we are using power component or any electronic component there are always some power loss takes place or heat dissipation takes place now the question comes how this power loss or heat dissipation can be heat can be cooled so there are different methods for that first is natural air cooling second is forced air cooling third is forced liquid cooling what is natural air cooling in this heat is transferred from heat shrink to the atmosphere so this is natural phenomena hence it is called as natural air cooling what is second one it's forced air cooling what is that here we are using some blower fans across the across the heat shrink and because of that effectiveness of heat shrink get increased by approximately 20% third is forced liquid cooling water cooled heat shrinks use water to remove the generated heat within the device this type of cooling is used when high power rectifiers are used next is over current protection using fuses semiconductor protection fuses are used to protect against over current conditions in power electronic equipment they are specifically designed to reduce i square t peak let through current and arc voltages during a fault condition this is the circuit diagram one of the circuit diagram of over current protection circuit we have used the fuse over here requirement of a fuse its current rating should be such that it should be able to carry the rated device current continuously during arcing the fuse voltage should be high enough to force the current to lower value and dissipate the circuit energy once the fuse blows open it should be able to withstand any risk striking voltage appearing across it advantage of such individual fusing are as follows it ensures better coordination between each device and its fuse better utilization of device become possible provide protection against the cross conduction or shoot through faults in case device get damage then that device can be isolated from rest of the circuit by opening the corresponding fuse over voltage protection circuits 
So what are the different over voltage protection circuits? Uh, first is snubber circuit. Second is non-linear surge suppressors and crowbar circuits. So in snubber circuit, we have selenium diode. This is the symbol of selenium diode and this is the characteristic of selenium diode, which is almost same as any of the diode. Selenium diode is having a low forward voltage and well-defined reverse breakdown voltage. When this selenium diode connected across any power device and if the voltage across that device get increases, this diode goes into breakdown. Hence, it will save that power device from over voltage. Now, next is crowbar circuit. So you can see here, we have the fuse. Now in normal operation, this fuse will be on. So the current will flow normal to the circuit and we'll get the output across the load. In case this, uh, there is some over voltage takes place, this fuse will get blown and hence the SCR will get shot and instead the current or voltage won't get through the load, it will go through the SCR. Third is metal oxide varistors, MOV. It is a non-linear device. As soon as a high voltage appears across MOV due to a voltage transient, its resistance decreases suddenly. So it draws a heavy current and loads the AC supply. This will reduce the supply voltage and surge voltage also be suppressed. Next topic is electromagnetic interference. Power electronic circuits switch on and off large amount of current at high voltages and hence they can generate unwanted electrical signals because associated with the switching of a high value current, there is an electromagnetic radiation. These signals affect other electronic systems present nearby. These unwanted signals have a high frequency and results in EMI. It is also known as radio frequency interference, RFI. Sources of EMI, there are a number of sources of EMI as follows. Atmospheric noise, radar, lightning, radio and TV, pagers, mobiles and electric motors. Now how we can minimize EMI, EMI generation? We can introduce a resistance in the LC circuit to damp the oscillations. We can use the electrostatic shielding in the transformers as this minimizes the coupling between its primary and secondary. It is possible to use soft switching, resonant converters based on ZVS and ZCS technologies to reduce EMI. Area of ground connections on PCB should be increases to reduce its resistance and minimize EMI. Next topic is heat shink. So you can see this is the diagram of heat shink. Power devices are mounted on some form of heat shinks, which are large metal pieces of different shapes. When a heat shink is used, the heat produced by the power device is radiated into air more quickly and easily. EMI shielding. A shield is defined as conducting material which is placed in the path of EMI to minimize it. The effectiveness of this shield depends on following factors. Distance between the EMI source and receiver, type of EMI and characteristics of shielding material. Shielding can be attenuated, attenuate the EMI by either absorbing or reflecting it. EMI conducting along the cables, the form of current can be reduced by either twisting the cables or shielding them. We can minimize the transmitted EMI along a cable by means of suppression filters. These filters are basically LC filters. In this lesson, we have learned resonant converters, ZCS and ZVS, over voltage and over current protection, electromagnetic interference. Thank you.